Hello. I thought I would talk a little bit about the things that are fun to me, and uh, a little bit about why I do like Space Engineers. See, I really like it when there are little holes and gaps that I can stick my fingers into and see what's underneath. Yeah, if I can pry apart a game or a piece of software or an API or whatever, I'm really happy. And the more I can see down into it, and the more I can pull at it, the happier I'll be. Space Engineers keeps coming up because it is very, very much full of those little gaps and holes. In fact, sometimes it makes me tear my hair out because there are so many and the devs keep creating more. I'm probably going to be playing a lot less Space Engineers in the upcoming days, but I got this giant rush of activity uh, because someone came up with a really fun way to do uh, gravity drives. And I, I found out one of the pieces on my own, and then I was like, okay, yeah, I can do that. And then I found out the other piece today or yesterday, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So I've been creating a lot of stuff around it because it's a hole, and I can explore down into it. And in this case, I created this little destroyer here. Uh, this is a very nice destroyer, but it has a flaw. And the flaw is that the gravity drive doesn't work. Or rather, it works too well. So in order to control the gravity drive, what you do is you have these two wheels. And you set one wheel up for steering and one wheel up for acceleration. You can also do it with just one wheel, but there's a lot more math involved. This works really well, except for one small detail. Wheels are the most unreliably programmed piece of shit in the game. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean. So, if you look at the right, you can see that I'm at 0.0, .0 meters per second. Shall we see how long it takes for me to get to max speed? That is pretty fast acceleration, and I'm at max speed. In fact, it's going to take me so long to decelerate that it's better to decelerate using my gravity drive as well. And if I want to go left and right, same thing. Super easy, right? So what am I talking about? What do I mean that it, it, is, it is not going to work? Well, if you look at these wheels, let's go ahead and do some real flying. So, just start to accelerate and turn like this and maybe I'll just turn here and let's do some maneuvering. Oh my gosh! We're being attacked by pirates or something. We've got to do some maneuvering. What are we going to do? Hmm. I think you can see what the issue is here. I was hoping to get a better... This thing can do... Oh, there we are. That was a good one. Yep, that's right. The wheel actually did so much damage that it punched through the cargo area and into the landing area, and I think now it's just floating freely inside the ship. Let's take a tour of the ship. First, I better turn off the gravity drives. So this is the port entrance to the ship, and it is also the crew area. So if you come over here and you look around, you can go and uh, take a look at the various bunks that we've set up here, and they have a reasonable view. If we were to leave, go outside, we can easily pop over to the other side here. and just take a look at the other side of the ship. This leads us into the conference area and uh... okay so one of the things you will have noticed is that this wheel didn't just break itself off it actually broke the whole steering column off and wedged it into the ship which is a, a little unusual. It doesn't normally do that. Normally the wheel just flies off uh, like that. And you, it flew through the front of the ship. Mm, both of them lost their steering columns today. That's a little unusual. But it punches through heavy armor like it is made of paper. 
and it does as much damage as it wants randomly throughout the ship. And this is actually a relatively minor amount of damage. I have had situations where I have actually torn out this whole wing area. Yeah, all the way back here. So in the first thing I did today, the first ship I released, I actually released a, um, a ship that had wheels on the back, but they were so far out the back of the ship that they couldn't hurt anything. Uh, there was still a risk if, if you were decelerating as fast as you possibly could and the wheels detached, they would have just exploded. But if you were accelerating or side-to-side -side accelerating and the wheels detached, they weren't going to cause any harm because there's nothing back there but empty space. And if the wheels detach, it's not a permanent thing. They will randomly retach at some point, just kind of arbitrarily. But until they do that, they will float free and be tens of meters from where they're supposed to be. Anyhow, this is the second deck, and here we've got the medical room, which we use quite a lot, as you can see. We have accidents like this all the time, and some kind of hollow desk, because why not? The entire engineering area is fully accessible uh, and is and is oxygenated, pressurized, uh, normally. Not today, but normally. Uh, as you can see, the door to do that is over here, and you can go up and through our engineering area, and on the other side, you can open the door and enter into the cryo area, which also has some bathrooms, because why not? This is also where our computer core is. And here is Mimur, struggling to try and figure out what the heck is going on. Another door into engineering, and then up here we've got the actual front command area. Now, even though the, in, the inside of the ship has been torn apart quite badly, this is still a fully functional ship because it's built using the standard methods that I use to, produce, to create things, and that means that it can take an enormous amount of damage. Still, the fact is, these wheels are unsuitable. I'm going to try maybe uh, some other stuff. Um, there are some things I can do by having a small ship core, and if you pilot the small ship core, I can use overrides to turn all of the other engines on and off, but then I can only do forward, backwards, left, and right. Uh, it's very, very hard for me to do uh, up, down, or QE. Mm. Either way, uh, this is the sort of thing that is a little infuriating because I found this little hole, this tiny little physics hole that I could dig into to get more out of this game. And I could get a lot more out of this game. The performance of this vessel is enormous, uh, and it would have been great to be able to do that, but unfortunately the wheels detach if you turn. Maybe there's a way around it. If you know that, let me know. But this is the sort of thing you've got to expect when you're digging down into the holes that the devs didn't realize they'd left. Uh, still, what I wouldn't give for maybe a mod block that just prints what buttons the player is pressing out to uh, the detailed info of of its of, of its own block, uh, or something like that. Anything uh, thrusters that actually tell me, that actually indicate how much thrust they're actually putting out right now. Wheels that actually tell me how fast they're spinning. Uh, any of that stuff. Uh, gyros that actually tell me how much force they're exerting on each of the three axes. This sort of thing should be pretty standard, but it's it's not here, and I've got to pursue in through the holes to get it. But that is why I keep coming back to Space Engineers, because it's full of holes, just like my ship.